we visited master fly tie Pat Swift, who shared some of his great tips and techniques for tying trout flies. This fly we're going to tie here is a smelt fly. This particular one's a jack sprat, but I mean the principles are the same whether it's a grey ghost or a Parsons Glory with a chenille body. Um, this one we're actually going to do with a UV body because it's the the flavour material at the moment, particularly in low light conditions. So we've tied our tinsel in. Um, I actually like to use quite a fine tinsel, particularly if I'm using a, a what I call a flat body. Um, the next step would be to tie a little bit of a tag in the back. We'll just use a little bit of red fibres here from a, a red feather. And not knot neither there. The UV material is actually, that I use is actually a crystal flash and um, so what we do is grab a few fibres out there. I've actually got four five fibres there and we'll just double them over and just tie them in nice and tight. Then with all fly tying everything is actually worked from the back to the front. So we'll just build up the body so it's a little bit thicker. behind, a couple of turns, tie off in front and then we can actually just trim off the material. Now the trick with all smelt flies is to actually choose your feathers from a cape, don't use hackle feathers and from choosing them from a cape we can get four feathers that are sitting next to each other and it's a lot easier to actually match the feathers up by just sliding the feathers along each other so the tips are all even and we've got our feathers all sitting nice and straight if we can get them to that stage so they're nice and nice and square we can actually continue. The next step is to actually decide how long you want the fly. If, if you actually tie it a long um, tail on it you're actually going to get more action out of the fly but you do actually risk that the fish actually taking it short. If um, you tie it too short you actually risk um, no action from the fly and the fish actually not being interested in it at all. So it's it's a, it's, a, it's a personal preference as to how long you actually like it. I like it slightly longer than the length of the actual hook. Now we've actually we've trimmed it and we, with these what I call hard bodied flies rather than a chenille body I like to actually take some of the material off the bottom so it all sits in place properly. And the next step I like to do is just to get the four feathers well, the four ends of the feathers, the four quills of the feathers all sitting one, two, three, four in a row. If they twist up like this, it's going to twist the feathers and the fly's not going to sit properly. So I've got them all four sitting right. I should be able to just tie a few ties in and the feathers should actually just sit there nicely. And then you'll actually get your fly and your material swimming, swimming straight. So the tinsel is just pulled through the fibres. Try not to put too much pressure on the first turn and by the time you do a second turn you can put a little bit more pressure on. If you wanted to put a heckle on, you'd put the heckle on now. But um, with these 
flat body flies I like to actually just use use them as, as thin and as skinny as possible so I don't put hackles on these ones. I'm going to pair of eyes so I can see where he's going. And then we're all set for the epoxy. Yeah so this is um, this is UV um, crystal flash, which um, you can actually use a few strands across the top of a fly if you don't want to use too much of it. Um, and Or you can actually wrap it like we've just done, wrap it around the body. But if you do wrap it around the body, make sure you epoxy it because it is a very, very um, fine material. Um, my theories on it, I, I use both, this is a flat pearl material, which I use for pearl bodied flies. And I prefer to use the pearl body flies on bright sunny days, and then I, I like to use the UV body flies on darker overcast days. They seem to, I mean, fishing is not an exact science, but that um, those are the basic rules. They, they tend to work better in those conditions. How many flies are you tying personally a, a week? Um, I tie a thousand flies a week, so um, about 200 a day, and I tend to actually do them in phases, so I'll tie for two hours, have a break for half an hour, tie for two hours, have a break for half an hour. And how many, how many flies are you tying a year? So it's about um, a thousand a week, it's about 50,000 a year. So in the Rotorua lakes, these, um, there's three main um, um, types of um, fish or crustaceans that the fish actually feed on, so this one's a Kura imitation, and um, so it's actually a little bit the same lines as a woolly bugger. It's got a, a hard shell back, um, a marabou and the feelers out of it. And the, the silhouette of this when it's wet actually looks something like this. So it just looks like a, like a kura going through the water. So often I'd actually jig this as the bottom fly in my rig, um, close to the bottom. Um, the next fly is a bully imitation. Um, cockapoo imitation. So this one um, I've just come up with after actually seeing some um, very very yellow bullies actually taken um, from the stomach of a fish. So and once again the silhouette of that when it's actually wet um, going through the water just looks like a, a cockapoo. And the last one is similar to the one we just tied. Uh, this is a grey one, a grey ghost, which is your smelt imitation. So if you've got some of all three of those styles of flies, um, you cover most of the options um, for the rotor trout, particularly jigging and harling trolling.